So that was a heavy defeat, a very painful one. And Ghost Mule is going to put it into perspective just why that result was so big on the day for both KCB and City Stars. Well, actually, it was a relegation battle, I would call it, because KCB is on the rise, City Stars has been on the decline. So there was a, a six point difference, and uh, if KCB won it, they reduced it to three points. So I think uh, it's, a, it's a game that uh, really changes the direction of uh, the relegation battle because it looks from this result, KCB are closing in on City Stars. And I think, uh, Tim, could that have made uh, your decision on that? Um, I don't think the result so much made a decision more of, of kind of internal politics which was going on within the club. Um, you know, I can I can take a defeat if it's if it's my decision and my team playing, but um, but you know we have to answer to the fans and the media, um, and it's it's not my team selection or tactics. Then then that's that's the main reason. I, I like that because that's what he told me on Friday when we we're doing that game in an interview, post match interview, and you were rather frustrated, very emotional. Gilba Salebwa, when a coach is answerable to the fans and, of course, to us, the media, for the state, then you do get frustrated when there's interference from those who are telling you what to do but expect you to get the results that you have no control over. Well, the best thing is to, is to quit because the truth of the matter is as soon as Opoku came back, we could not understand who was the man in charge because both of them, at every given time, would find uh, a team you know, on the touchline giving instructions. At the same time, Ofoku was also giving instructions. But who is the boss? There is only one boss, and there can only be one boss. So, so at this particular point, I think, uh, for City Stars to be able to remain uh, in this league, they must make a decision. It is either Ofoku becomes the head coach, and team uh, makes the exit, or team stays at the head coach, and Ofoku makes an exit. There is no two about it. But, but contrary to that, when Ofoku came uh, in and uh, you played uh, Ulinzi in Nakuru, I thought you guys, you are tight, because I, I saw the first time he came at City Stadium and I thought this is a very good partnership. Since Ofoko was there, he knows the players and he brought a, a very positive effect to the society. I think when, when I did my job, I try and do it as professional as, as possible. Um, so I don't let personalities or, or that sort of thing get, get in the way of it. So you know, when I work, it doesn't matter who I work with, um, as long as they're professional as well, then, uh, then I'll get on with them. So. Uh, in, in that case, it was it's more professionalism. But, but um, when you say your team selection was interfered by who? You are the head coach. Yeah, you, that's that's what I think as well. Uh, but when you're when you're told that there's been instructions given from the from the chairman that uh, someone should choose the team and, and the tactics, um, you, you know I have to answer to, to my boss. And uh, when that message is coming down, then you, you have to uh, adhere to that. Well, that's interesting because uh, one selection that drew an eyebrow was that of Majani. What a horrible game he had on the day. In fact, a couple of errors, <laughs> one of which, uh, actually two of which were really, really costly. Coach, every time we look back at this, you realize that Majani was punching that ball out. Was it a bad case of just, you know, jitters on the day, bad day at the office? But we see them do this time again, so why put him in post? Yeah, you know... I don't want to speak badly of Majani because he's, uh, he's a great guy and uh, a very experienced goalkeeper. Um, but I gave, uh, I gave the debut to Kevin Amondi uh, for a particular reason. Um, he, he's got more physical presence in the 18 yard box and uh, stop, shot stopping and hand, handling is, uh, is also good. Um, it's, it's not just in that game. I think Majani struggled in terms of uh, punching the ball in the last game against Ulinzi. Uh, if you remember Ulinzi's goal, he came out to nearly the 18 yard line to, to punch the ball out and missed it. Um, so it's, it's something he needs to develop in this game, um, but again, it's, it's, it comes down to team selection on the day, uh, which I believe was, uh, was incorrect. Indeed, and the more we look at this one, uh, again with Celebwa, time and again, this habit of punching the ball out, we actually spoke of this one uh, once about Majani and that habit. He's not the only keeper in the Kenya Premier League who has that habit. It's a, it's, it's a dangerous one to have. Them. It's a poor technique. Uh, ball handling techniques, something that he should have done when he's growing up as a youth. And clearly when we see him punching the ball back into play, instead of punching the ball away from the action, it clearly shows you that those are the basic things that uh, whoever is in charge needs to work on him. But how many games do they have more? I think this is the 20th game that they're, they're, they're going into. I think time is running out and if a change needs to be made, it has to be made now. Because at Ulinzi, he was the MVP. 
And then the following, the following day he plays against uh, uh, KCB, he makes those kind of mistakes, and I think that's the reason why you got fired, because of those mistakes. But <laughs> just to point out, Bright did not get fired, he resigned, <laughs> he resigned <laughs> all right? So, like Yoko Sanembo, who claims to have resigned and got fired, he was not fired, he resigned. So, Kamiyo Onyango, in contrast, had a pretty, pretty good game, didn't he, Ghost? Well, Zakaria has been a good keeper, he's experienced, he's a good uh, stopper in terms of uh, shot stopping and uh, you can see since he started playing in the second leg, KCB is a really changed side and a goalkeeper decides a lot of the destiny of, of a side, so Zake was in good shape, not only this game, the three games that they played since they started the second leg. And what really catches my attention here is the patience, he didn't just come out to close, he saw the defender was there and knew he would cause some problems for the offender, so he held his line. Another case in point, look at that for a save, that free kick was well taken, Bright. Yeah, it's a good free kick, it's uh, something which I've worked on the ground, it's actually in training, um, so I knew his, his, his specialities in, in that area. Um, you know, again, for me, I felt Lawrence has played out of position. He's uh, played as a left back, and he hasn't played as a left back throughout the whole season. Played in, in midfield, and our best chances came from him as well. But it means when he's pushing up and he's getting into the box, it means then we're, we're, we're vulnerable uh, at the back as well, especially down the, the left hand side. Someone else that you felt was being played uh, in a position that was not strong in and we wanted to take a gamble with was Davis Nana. You, of course, lost him. You wanted to play him further up the pitch in a more attacking role. I remember that discussion outside the National Stadium where the head coach, or should I say former head coach, one of the stars, Adela Bush. Yeah, Dennis, Dennis Young has got great potential for, uh, for international football and, uh, and, and he's got the physique. And I think sometimes big, strong players are sometimes pigeonholed into, into defensive positions just because of they, they are strong players. Uh, whereas he's, he's great at passing the ball, great at running with the ball and, and shooting as well. Um, he needs to develop a little bit more of his game um, before he's, he's pushed up uh, a little bit higher. Um, but I definitely think he's got potential to, to push up higher and play in a more attackive position. So what next for City Stars? Well, for me, uh, you know, I had a, a five-year plan which I wanted to push into, into the club. Um, because if you look at the club, they finished 14th last season, just avoided relegation, 13th the season before that, 14th the season before that. So you have to be realistic in, in the goals and the expectations um, and I think a realistic goal for the club is to survive uh, the KPL and I think they've got the players to survive uh, in the KPL this season and then you want to try and get them to break into the top 10 um, but you need to look at what it's going to take to break into the top 10. Something that it might have a big influence is financial muscle. You were instrumental in getting them a sponsor. What happened there? Yeah, I, was, I spoke to a company um, due to the deal not going ahead, or so I can't, I can't mention them, but they wanted to come on board and, and partner the club. Uh, that, that deal unfortunately didn't, uh, didn't fall through, uh, but it's, it's, it's a, big, uh, a big thing for the KPL clubs, they need sponsorship. Uh, you know, the, the players during my time there haven't been paid a full four months wages, um, and, and myself as well. So it's difficult to motivate the players if they're, if they're not eating properly and, and they're struggling to pay their rent. Uh, and it's, it's supposed to be you know, one of the best and biggest leagues in, in East Africa. Um, so the, the clubs need that. All right, so finally, before uh, we say goodbye to uh, Coach Tim Bright, I must ask this now, what next for you? I'm asking this because you're sitting on playback. We have three former coaches, all released of their duty, all <laughs> decided to become football pundits on TV. What next for Tim? Chica, if you get your people to speak to my people, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, for, for me, you know, uh, I want to push more in, in terms of my career, so, uh, you know, as a head coach, my, my job's always temporary, so I have to look at uh, what options I have and what opportunities I have, whether they're here in Kenya, or whether they're back in Brazil, or back in, in the UK, or, or the rest of Europe, um, so I keep my options open. Uh, just a piece of advice, <laughs> there's, okay, there was a time that I used to watch for a team, and at 11 o'clock in the night, I got a text message that had the lineup. I called the chairman, I told him, this is the best lineup that I've seen so far, but you know what? You will be sitting on the bench tomorrow. And I will. Yeah. So, don't, take don't take nonsense anywhere. Yeah. It's happened to so many coaches. It's happened to uh, Gozi Boulay himself. Uh, he also quit. They don't take nonsense. Uh, perhaps managers, uh, management needs to understand that you are not the coach. 
Let them do their job so that you can hang them if they don't do it well. Place of the week, Kasi with option number one. What about this for a goal? Not one that Tim Bride will watch to remember because possibly the goals that were last for him in charge of a team in the Kenya Premier League or not, maybe he'll move to another team. You never know. Magic happens. There it is. Brilliant goal. Gave KCB the lead. They were dominant in that particular game, and this is the reason why we've just talked about him. He was sensational. Zakaria Onyango with a brilliant save, and guess what? He punched it into a danger area. What a hard shot to stop, but his defense, as you'll see again right here, was quick to react and, you know, save him some blushes. Great double save, by the way. A team that didn't have a defense quickly reacting, though, gives us option number three. Western Steamer will regret this time and again. Shot taken, no one in there. Hassan was sensational in this particular game. In fact, he scored a goal. We'll see it in just a second. Um, the reaction from Western Steamer throughout that match was very disappointing, and here it is. Goalkeeping error, typical. Punch that ball away from the danger area, or in this case, just hold on to that soft cross. He didn't, Hassan was there to capitalize, and the defense was asleep. We'll be breaking down that game for you in just a second in the second, third part of this show. So you have a couple of options there. Kassim's goal, Onyango Zakaria's fantastic double save, or is it Hassan's play? This man on your screen right now, Tim Bright, says goodbye to the City Stars. You said, at the moment, you're no longer head coach. No, I, I made my... my point uh, clear from the start and if, if I'm to answer for the results which I don't have a problem with then I have to have full control over the technical bench and, and the first team um, so if, if that changes then, then I can carry on with the plan if not then I move on to the next club the next challenge all right Tim Bryan with his thoughts uh, thank you for your time thank you for coming through we'll say goodbye to him and in time as soon as we know you will know whether or not he will come back to the Kenya Premier League or remain at City Stars as he leaves another coach who was fired and turned TV pundit comes back on Salim Zalebwa and Ghost will be the team to wrap up this show we'll see you in a bit